In this video I'm going to show you how I managed to plot a graph for using the data from my catapult experiment. So I've put the data for the catapult experiment into a table and because there was a lot of variability uh, I know that the actual ruler reading that I pulled the balloon back to was, was a bit sketchy and this is a place where I think there was zero extension was a little bit sketchy. But this is the best I could do. I reckoned that the zero mark was 189 and then when I pulled it down to the 180 mark it would be extended 9 millimeters <clears throat> and then I got a whole range of different heights each time I did that so I repeated five times and done a lot of measurements because there's so much scatter in this now uh, the way I can handle this data is for every 180 reading I can just copy that down the table and what you can see is here, I've copied it and it is 180. You may find that it adds one on. Uh, if you do a copy and you can go over and get a choice of the autofill options, if it's on fill series, it would add one. I don't want it to fill a series, I just want it to copy the cells. So I'm copying this 180 value down here, then the 75 value will be copied down, the 70 value, and so forth. And then for each of those values, what I want to do is I want to do 189 minus that value to find out what the extension was in millimetres. So this is, I click in the cell, equals 189 minus that number there. So I click in the box, make the number and press enter and it will work out the 9. And what will happen when I get my black cross and drag down it starts to work out what the extensions were for each of the ruler, the ruler readings where I was pulling the balloon down to that ruler reading. Okay, and I'll just finish off going right down the table for all of my data points. Now I've got all my data, what I really want to do is just to see how X has affected H. So I can just copy the whole table down. So I went up to an extension of 11 centimetres, that was quite hard work. And then I'm going to insert the scatter graph. Make sure I've got the right data there. That's going up to an extension of 80, just under 80 millimetres. And that's the series there. And we can see we've got a lot of scatter, but there's a very clear curve going up there. There's one data point that seems miles off, but in general, I'll be able to draw a curve through that data and I could try adding a trend line and see if a polynomial or something will make any sense of it. That's not too bad. So we could ask it to give me the equation of the polynomial and it is suggesting we've got some sort of x squared relationship going on there. So that's quite a useful way of starting off in Excel. But what we need to do for NCA level 2 is to be able to plot the linear graph. And we can look at the data that we've got practically, but the other way of analysing data is to look for a theory that can explain it and work from that end. And what we've got in the book is uh, some simple theory which applies the conservation of energy to the situation where works done on stretching the balloon and if all of the energy that's stored in the stretched balloon gets converted into gravitational potential energy of the marble then we can put some equations together to explain what's going on. So if we assume that the elastic potential energy of the stretched balloon converts into kinetic energy and the kinetic energy converts into gravitational potential energy of the marble, then all of the elastic potential energy is turning into gravitational energy. So half kx squared is mg delta h. Now that's a big assumption because in fact you know that there'll be friction in lots of places, that the balloon will get hot, and that not all of the energy from the balloon is going to go into the marble. The balloon's moving for one thing. And that just gets stopped by holding the fact that it's holding on to the toilet roll. Anyway, if all of this occurs, then what we can do is rearrange this equation and we end up with x squared equaling a constant 
times delta H. If the mass is constant, that seems reasonable. If G is constant, that seems reasonable. The one we're not sure about is K. And I think if we measured how hard you had to pull at that balloon to make it extend, it may not be completely linear. But it's certainly going to be to a certain approximation. So it's reasonable to expect that x squared is proportional to delta h. So plotting a graph of x squared against delta h is a good idea. It's always a good idea to make sure you label your axes before you forget what they are. So let's put those in. Horizontal axis was the extension of the balloon rubber that gets called x. And that was measured in millimetres. And then on the vertical axis, we had the height of the, the marble. And that was being measured in centimetres. Now we'll shift that graph out of the way and go on with working out what is x squared. So I want x squared, and this is just like the toy arrows activity, so equals that times with the asterisk that, and I can drag those values down. And if I want to be lazy, I can just copy that h column across there. So now I'm going to plot x squared against h, highlighting and dragging the whole column, inserting a scatter graph. And this time, what you can see is I've got probably a straight line graph, and I can tidy this up and label the axes. I've just labelled the axes. I haven't done anything fancy with the units, I've just left them in the units they came in. And of course, x was in millimetres, so now I've got millimetres squared. And I can click on the data and add a trend line. And I'll display the equation on the chart. And so what I can see now is that I've got height. So y was h and x is x squared, so I need to put a 2 in there, and to make sure it's squared, I'll highlight it, right click, font, superscript, I think I've got an extra space in there, here we go. So now I've got the line, I can see that the intercept is insignificant, that odd stray data point there isn't really making much difference to the line that's been chosen but it does seem to be a reasonable straight line relationship and it would validate what we think is that this is the general trend. Um, the significance of the gradient here we can't really test because it depended on the uh, elastic constant of the balloon which we haven't measured. If we went and measured that, we would actually be in a position to test whether that's the right value because we do know the map, we could measure the mass of the marble and we know the gravitational field strength. But for uh, a physics level two investigation, uh, just to say, have this relationship has got you to merit because we've used techniques to reduce our uncertainty, we've taken lots of readings. Uh, we used various techniques to try and make the readings accurate as possible when we took the readings and uh, this is a pretty good set of data.